when you think about that eight years, what uh, it's easy to ask you what stands out, but obviously winning a premiership would be very <coughs> high up there, but away from the actual pitch, what stands out? What, what are the things you remember about being at Oval Park or, or, or even trips away or obviously keep it PG? <laughs> but, um, you know me well enough to know that. Yes, uh, it, um, it would be very dull an away dull, trip with yeah. you, I imagine. Um, I was just a real good, good group of people. It's really cliche, but a lot of my good friends are my, my peers, my, the players you, you play with here. And sport's a unique kind of environment that you spend more time with your teammates than you do necessarily with your, with your loved ones. And, um, and sometimes you're kind of thrown into that, that scenario. My first day at Oval Park was... Yeah, this was as an international intimidated by the senior changing room and the hierarchy with the changing rooms. I think I get got changed in the toilets for the first couple of days until I ventured into the into the uh, where the changing room with no windows. Did my time in the in there. But it's just just being able to, to run out on the pitch with yeah, with your friends and massive honours for me of being able to captain the side. So things like the run the LV, but the European semi final at. Um, up in Nottingham, I was very fortunate to be able to captain the side on that day. Unfortunately, we lost, but um, I think the, there's just the little tradition. So, like walking out here on match day, as soon as you start, you hear the feet banging on the on the ceiling, and you walk out, you walk down the tunnel, and you hear the atmosphere. Those are the things that I'll I'll, I'll miss for sure. But those are the things I'll, I'll treasure the most. What is the feeling at the moment? Because you. Some people get the chance to say goodbye when they want to. Some people get to walk away from the game when it's just time or they go to France or whatever it is. But what was that first feeling when you did sit down with the medical team and they said, look, there's just really no way around this. You're going to have to tie it up. Uh, it's just a bit strange. So you don't, and again, it's a bit cliche, but you don't necessarily, you don't appreciate how lucky you are to do what you do. You don't necessarily appreciate that when you run out in front of the, the fans here that it might be the last time you get to to do that. We saw that with, with the Rob Horn and I was didn't play that game but was sat opposite that with watching that with my my youngest and I just think actually I'm fortunate that I've although I'm having to stop playing, I'm still <laughs> relatively unscathed in terms of the grand grand scheme of things and um, yeah, it's just a it's just a very kind of weird limbo sensation when you're kind of transitioning out of something that you've, it's all you've ever known really, um, into whatever comes next. And what is next? What are you, what's next for Tady? I don't know. I've <laughs> um, got to uh, finish my studies at the university at the moment, so I've got uh, a module and a dissertation to do, so that will keep me busy in the relatively near future. Um, and then go out, put myself out there and um, meet some different businesses and see what happens. Would you look at contributing or, or coming back into the game in any way? Obviously there's a thousand different ways to do stuff, yeah. but is there anything you'd look at? Is it, you know, do you see yourself as a coach? Do you, do you think you'll ever be a referee? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, definitely not. Um, I, 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 love, I love sport and I think ultimately I would love to be involved in, in sport in, in some way in, in the future. Um, Coaching, I don't necessarily think, for me. Um, I think uh, the coaches work so hard for almost very little praise at times, and um, having done a little bit of it myself, it's, I think you've got to be really, really passionate about it, and you see that with the way, the way Geordie conducts himself. He's passionate about the way, about coaching, about making the team better. But um, yeah, I'd love to be involved in sport in, in whatever capacity that is at some point, but I think it's also probably healthy for me to to venture out and um, try and gain some new experiences and try and excel in whatever comes next. It would be criminal of me not to ask about probably one of the fans' favourite moment, which was last year when you made that tackle against Wasps. Yeah. Uh, talk us through it, because I, I want to bring you back down to earth first. You got a bit of help. He had to dodge Come on. a teammate. <laughs> but in saying that, even I will admit, it had me cheering, and I, I don't want to give you too much praise no, at times. Enough. But um, talk us through it because you've obviously you've seen something. Is that is that genuinely is that wisdom? Is that experience that you've gone? Look, I can make this. I know my body. I know my pace. Well, I knew, 
I guess the wisdom in is knowing that I knew what my angle should be and that there was no point in trying to catch him on too shallow an angle. That was my best chance of getting top end speed, which I was hoping was still there. Um, were you thinking about tackling him or were you thinking about pinning him in the corner? Because it was, No, it was I was thinking game. about trying to, I was just trying to think in, as the tackle, the first, well, my primary target would be the ball. I knew that by the time I got to him, he was going to be reasonably close to the line, so I was probably going to have to use momentum to try and flip him away from getting towards the line. If I'd gone around his legs, he probably still would have been able to reach. So I guess there's wisdom in that. Um, yeah, so my ankle's never been the same since. So I don't yeah. know that. <laughs> um, but no, it was obviously it was nice in the context of where we were at that point in the league, as, uh, the season in the league as well, to make a, a telling contribution, um, as it were. So fortunately, it didn't pan out in the grand scheme of things with, with the finish last year, but it was, yeah, it was nice to make a positive contribution in that game. It summed you up in a weird way because you, you're not a player in Manu's context of the game where you're going to run over blokes. Let's be real. You, <laughs> you're more likely going to outwit your opposition and that, that was you. you. You don't give up. You throw your body into it and you do. You obviously know how you're ending a bit early because you've probably thrown your body in since you were 18 to situations other guys might not have. But that tackle for me anyway summed you up in, in that you, you used your brain to say, I'm going to do this and then when you make that tackle, what's the first feeling? Because the crowd went absolutely berserk. It was like scoring a try almost. Yeah, I didn't really think too much. I just remember Tamura patting me on the head and then I think Fordy threw the ball in quickly, doesn't he? So I was more just sort of reacting to then what yeah. was what was going to go next. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I think as you, as a, as a youngster, you're reliant on possibly the, your physiology that might get you to a certain a certain level and then you've just got to, and more so now for the guys coming through today, you've got to be able to be a student of the game as well and I've, I've sort of always tried to, to do that to a certain extent so when the, yeah, the limbs aren't quite as nimble as they used to be, the brain still works as, as quickly or quicker than it used to so um, yeah, it's just contribution to the team is the, the main thing and cliche that uh, I guess I've always lived by. You had a similar moment when you played in the World Cup final in 2007, obviously in attack. Yeah. I've got to bring it up. Could have retired uh, after that. You could have probably retired on it. <laughs> what, talk, th talk us through that run because you were well, the second youngest or the youngest player to play in a World Cup final for England. Uh, not the World Cup itself, but the actual final. What was that like on that stage for you at that point in your career and your life? It was just it was a huge, a huge honour. I think, again, a little bit like the kind of the Wales situation, you just just in a bit of a bubble. I think if you actually thought about it too much, you'd probably not be able to, to sort of function. And I actually can't remember a huge amount about the, the final, um, <laughs> other than I tried to run it out about 22 early on and slipped over and got turned over and they scored a pen. But um, yeah, I can't remember anything about the run. Um, I watched it back actually the other day. I think someone had, uh, had tagged me in it. And um, I remember, I do actually remember I remember getting tackled, but I remember Schalkberger coming over at the top. And I got kneed in the head, so I'm trying to push the ball back, and I'm sort of all over the shot. So I, I can't, I honestly can't remember a huge amount about it. I might have been in the after party as well, which was an enjoyable occasion. So, yeah, my memory of that is white, but the, the, whole, the whole experience of the tournament was just, was just amazing, really. And um, the games out of all of them that stuck out was the Australian quarterfinal, because we'd gone down to Marseille with not really been given a chance of of winning and I look back at that Australian team and just was like, jeez. Um, you yeah, had to mention it, didn't you? Yeah. had to mention oh, it. He's given me enough stick. <laughs> but yeah, to, to win that and then we, we got on the bus and then we made our way down to Marseille Harbour and it's like, the Kiwis are getting beaten by France and we yeah, couldn't believe it and then obviously we went back up to, to Paris to, to play them in the semi-final the next week and uh, we were very lucky that yeah, Johnny had his kicking boots on and just kept nudging us ahead. It's, uh, it was, it's pretty cool. When you look back and talk to uh, not a youngster now in the game, but a youngster back then, there, as cliche as it sounds, there was no real social media. The, the, the individual brand wasn't as big. The game was very I'm different. All about the brand, you know. Maybe. Yeah, you are. <laughs> brand Tate. Brand Tate. There'll be a website soon, I'm yeah. sure. But when you look back and, I mean, silly things like the shirts were just tight. You probably didn't spend as much time talking about what you ate that week or have we done enough throws or line outs or kicks or whatever it is. 
how different are things now when you look at the game that you're leaving versus the game that you entered? I do think you nailed it with the, the social media. I think there's, there's the good and bad to the access that everyone gets to the players. I guess it generates the interest in the, the individuals and the sports if it's used in the right way, but it, it has its, its downfalls as well. And, um, yeah, I'm not sure. As you well know, I don't necessarily engage a huge amount in social media, but um, I do feel, a certain part of me feels, feels sorry for some of the younger guys coming through today because um, there is that, there's the opportunity, I guess, for people to say stuff to or about you that they wouldn't necessarily say to your face, which I didn't have when, as I was growing up and playing. So whether that's an added pressure or whether that's just my, my personality, I don't know. But it's obviously used in the right way. It can be quite a powerful tool from an individual branding perspective, but it's not something I've particularly engaged with. I'm going to ask you some quick ones because it would be uh, it'd be unfair if I didn't. But uh, toughest teammate you played with? Um, well, in terms of the, the hardness, someone like I don't like giving him praise. Someone like a Julian Salvi, <laughs> just because some of the, the states I've seen his body and his face in, and he just he never seemed to get injured. So in terms of toughness, from that perspective. Someone like him, toughest to play, or would be someone like Manu, because he's just physically a freak. And Touchwood, we're, we're seeing him on a, a staying fit run and we'll show everyone in the world how good he can be. I think I might know the answer, but the most dedicated player you played alongside, the most dedicated to their training, their craft? Uh, the obvious one's obviously Johnny Wilkinson, but I would, I would put George Ford in the same bracket as that in terms of. He needs to switch off sometimes. <laughs> the dedication to his craft and been, and been better at everything he does, those, those two stand out. What about the most skilled or naturally skilled player you've seen on a pitch or obviously played alongside, played against? Who's someone? Just in that... terms of skills, Ryan Lamb. Really? Yeah, had some ridiculous skills in terms of his passing and everything else. And Tamura as well, but I don't really like giving him too much praise. Finally, I will ask, not so much down the camera, but if you had one last thing to say to Tigers fans, England fans, and, and I guess even, we'll give them some credit, but Newcastle and, and Sale fans, <laughs> what would be the, the final thing you'd say to them? Because it's, again, you've seen a game that's grown and grown and grown and, and crowds have got bigger. And, and as you said, yes, you can talk to them on social media now, but you still get the opportunity here to, to say well, one last I, I thing. Guess to it's just a, a thank you for giving me the opportunity and supporting me through the opportunity to play a game that um, I would have played socially anyway and uh, give me some amazing memories. Um, I guess to, to the fans here, it's, a, it's also a massive thank you for allowing me to represent this amazing club and, and stick with it because it's going to come right again. There's some exciting times ahead for, for this team under Jordan. Thanks, mate.